these reverse Nordics are feeling incredible. Uh, did them yesterday, felt incredible. Uh, it's almost like I have this pop to my step. <laughs> I want to say it, I feel poppy uh, doing these. I feel weightless. I feel really bouncy on my feet. Um, it's incredible what range of motion does. And so I picked up a pattern here. I was thinking about this last night after the training session. Reverse Nordics feel incredible. Chest flies feel incredible to me. And I talked about them yesterday as well. ATG squats feel incredible to me. For the longest time, I have now felt that going all the way in a squat feels better. Feels better for my knees. Feels better for my hips. Feels better for my back. It's, it's always felt jarring to me to stop squatting at parallel. It felt unnatural. It felt like you're stopping a movement in the middle, of, like you're, you're stopping the momentum in the middle of the swing. It felt weird. It felt off. For the longest time, I've been feeling incredible with ATG squats. Incredible. Apart from the imbalances that are created from squatting too much and not addressing the posterior chain, ATG squats are the way to go, if you ask me. The knees feel good, back feels good, everything feels good. And so that, that kind of got me thinking about what I'm doing right now in terms of posterior chain exercises. There's many you can choose from, but I've chosen the RDLs. And the RDLs are incredible movement. They tax me like nobody's business and I can load a lot of weight. But today, because I'm going into a night shift, I decided to have a lighter day, so no volume. I was supposed to do five by five or 200 RDLs, but going, doing that and going into a night shift is ludicrous because I'm not gonna get any sleep. So I decided not to do that. I decided to do some singles off the floor deadlifts. So I went, went ahead and did that. And very quickly I realized, damn, this bar is really low. Right away I was like, man, it's a bloody long way down to get the bar. Remember, because I'm used to doing RDLs for the last few weeks. And the RDLs are convenient. They start at the top and you go as far as you can, you go back up. So it kind of felt weird to, to build tension at the bottom. It felt weird in that end range of, that end range of motion. Anyway, I persisted, uh, felt off. I haven't been doing a lot of off the floor deadlifting and even one or two weeks without doing the movement, you feel a little bit rusty. You feel, especially for somebody that's squatting every day, I, I'm very familiar with those movements. And when I don't do something for two weeks, the stuff that I do every single day is completely different to what I don't do every, every day, right? And so the deadlift kind of, it was a little weird. I felt off uh, the way I was doing it. So that kind of got me thinking. It got me thinking. This range of motion business, right? So reverse nordics feel incredible. The chest flies feel incredible. And the RDLs, I'm doing half range of motion. And so then I thought, what other posterior chain exercises are there that I can kind of do with full range of motion? Obviously, off the floor deadlifts are good. But off the floor deadlifts... I feel like a taxing if you want to do volume. And then it popped into my head. What about, what about deficit pulls? Deficit deadlifts. You know, one, two, three inch, four inch, whatever. So after, after today, I, uh, I did my deadlifts, worked up to 250. 250 felt off. Right, I felt like I was strong enough today. Uh, 230 moved all right, I felt. It's just that positioning at the bottom felt weird. Makes sense because I haven't been training it, right? I've been training the top portion mostly. So it felt really weird to go down and grab the bar. It felt weird to develop that tension. Now, I developed quite good strength out of the bottom in the deadlift, that leg drive, when I was doing deadlifts every single day. That kind of led me to do 260 kilos for one. And so I was kind of getting really good, practicing the hell out of it, uh, that bracing at the bottom, pinching my shoulders, and kind of getting my quads under the bar. I haven't done it for two weeks now, probably even more. Uh, and it just felt off, it felt really, really off. And so you could say that the RDLs are doing their job, it's just you haven't practiced the skill and that's kind of well within my mind. But I thought to myself, what if, what if I was doing deficit deadlifts instead of the RDLs? Obviously these are different exercises with different ideas, different, different kind of target areas. Uh, anyway, so I gave it a go today. Uh, I gave it a, today is one of those days where I'm not gonna work really hard, it's kind of like a feel out session. And what I felt with the deficit pulls, uh, now I played around with all, the, all these different heights. Uh, you'll see at the end of the video, so the last few uh, clips are the, the, the RDLs, are the deficit deadlifts. And, the, and the, the video, the clips you'll see, I'm using a, quite a big block 
uh, measures to just under, it's like 3.9 inches or something like this, uh, just under, uh, I think it's 10 centimeters, yeah, 10 centimeters, so just under four inches. Uh, and I thought this is gonna be mostly quad initially and then it's gonna be like an RDL at the top, right? With just a bit of momentum through that sticking point. My hamstrings started activating a lot. And so that kind of got me puzzled. They were getting more activated than I, than I get them activated in the RDL. Anyway, a bit of a head scratcher there. I don't know what that means. It's a really long range of motion. It's a long time to brace. And it's making me think, if I was to do deficit pulls for a very long time, and I go back to standard deadlifts, the bar won't feel that's a bloody long way down kind of feeling. The, 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 the RDL, I kind of got accustomed to kind of muscling that weight from the top down. But it, got, it felt off. So anyway, in my mind now, I'm thinking to myself, introducing the, these deficit pulls somehow and seeing how they feel. Now, I'm not going to deviate away from my idea that posterior chain is everything. That's still very, very bright in my head. This idea is, is burning in my head right now. Um, I just don't know what the next step is. I don't like the idea of not having that tension at the bottom. Now I can, this is one uh, option, I can continue doing the RDLs as I am doing, pushing for that far plate RDL, and they feel great, I love RDLs, they really do feel great. And then, so I'm doing that every other day, and then I miss a whole bunch of days when I'm at work, because I don't wanna do that and head into work feeling smashed. Uh, so only on days off that I do that. So basically I do two days a week of really heavy RDLs. On those other days, in between days, I'm thinking I can just do off the floor deadlifts, right? Work up to 80, 90% for a single, and that can get my kind of practicing in. Or I can not do that and go with deficit pulls, which is gonna make sure that the weight on the bar is a lot lower. And then maybe I can put a little bit more volume into that rather than the off the floor. I'm thinking to myself, if I was to do a whole bunch of off the floor pulling, or off uh, the blocks pulling, so deficit pulls, I wonder how the deadlift would feel after a block of that and not touching any standard deadlifts. I wonder if the bar would, would kind of pop off the ground. And I know that a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, Dave Tate, um, he was talking about it a few months ago that I was watching. Um, you know, he said the best way to improve leg drive is to pull off blocks. And then the other day I was listening to Lewis Simmons as well, one of the long, long time old school videos, and he was saying off the block pulls off the block pulls, with chains, bands, all sorts of things. So anyway, it's all kind of like circulating in my mind. Uh, so I'm gonna try and play around with that. Uh, there seems to be a pattern. I don't know what it is about me. There seems to be a pattern that my body loves range of motion. The more the range of motion, the better it is. The one thing that I've noticed with the deficit pulls is there's a huge demand on the lower back, a massive demand on the lower back because there's greater hip uh, flexion involved at the starting position. Your hips are more bent. Now, there's many ways you can do this. Uh, there's a few uh, ways you could do this. You could do kind of like a, a stiff-legged type of deal where you keep the knee angle kind of similar, uh, so kind of more kind of vertical shin position, and you reach over the bar, okay? Or you can kind of squat down and grab the bar. I'm not sure which way is the better way, uh, but I, today, you'll see at the end, uh, end of the video, I was kind of squatting down into the bar, uh, trying to get the quads involved. And surprisingly, that position was putting my hamstrings on the map. And I think that's because the hip starts in a very flexed position. And in order for you to maintain that lower back tightness or you know, your erectors uh, locked in, that kind of puts strain on the, on the, that puts tension into the hamstrings. And when you start to pull, the hamstrings get involved as well from a, from a kind of more acute angle. So anyway, a bunch of these ideas are in my head. Uh, one surprising idea was I felt quite off with the deadlift. Um, so two, two scenarios here. Either I just put in the normal deadlifts on the off days when, I, when I'm not doing RDLs or I put in the deficit pulls. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. But these, this whole range of motion thing, I want to kind of follow that idea. Uh, the reverse nordics feel incredible. Like I feel, I feel open. I don't know what other word I could use. I feel open. I feel poppy walking around. I feel light on my feet ever since doing these. And it's only been a day, man. 
I feel even walking, my, my gait is easier. And it makes sense because if you have tight hip flexors, that kind of trailing leg in your normal gait of walking is going to be restricted. And then you're going to kind of blow that lack of mobility into your lower back. If you think about it, if you can't uh, extend your hip, if you hit the block there, if you hit a limiter there, the next thing to kind of borrow tension, uh, borrow range of motion from is the lower back. And so a lot of people with anterior pelvic tilt, they have limited hip flexor mobility, limited hip extension mobility. And so what happens is they stick their ass out, meaning they uh, hyperlodosis their spine uh, in the lower back. So walking feels good. My, 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 even last night, I don't know what happened last night, man. I, uh, I went to bed around 10.30, 10 o'clock. And I woke up at 3.30, 4 o'clock and I was like done. I was done sleeping. That's a very early, very quick sleep. And I thought to myself, I kind of got up, had some, had some water, kind of messed around. Um, and it was like six o'clock by the time I finally got up and I'm like, oh, this is it now. I can't, I can't sleep anymore. I thought to myself, maybe these reverse Nordics have done something. Like maybe I've just had an incredible sleep because all that tension has kind of left my body. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was just a freak night or whatever. Uh, but I can't find any other reason why I didn't sleep all that long. Um, so I think this here is a 250. I got it off the ground. But in the process of getting it off the ground, I lost my positioning and I lost my tightness in the quads. And I just basically all ended up in my posterior chain. And if I am at mid shin and all of the weight is in my posterior chain, that's a freaking grind, man. I want my quads involved a little longer. Uh, because if I lose momentum at mid shin, then it becomes a grinder. You know, deadlifting is not just a stiff legged pull. Uh, that's something I've kind of tried to move away from. This idea that a deadlift is a pull, it is not a pull. Even though we kind of synonymously kind of use pulling and deadlifting, it's actually a push for the initial part. At least that's how I understand it. It's a push, so you engage your quads and you try and stay as upright as possible. And you gain that initial velocity on the bar, and then it becomes a pull kind of around the knee level. When the bar hits the knee level, then you kind of like stick your hips through. That's a pull. But if you, if you think of the deadlift as a pull and you start with vertical shins, from the get-go, man, that's textbook stiff-legged deadlifts to me, man. Uh, it's a very awkward position for your spine to be in. It might be okay if you have really long arms, but if you have somebody like me that has shorter arms, I need to compensate, man. I need to you know, squat down into it a little bit more. I need to turn my feet out a little bit, turn my knees out a little bit, kind of wedge myself into the bar a little bit. Um, so in, in, that, in, that, in that last rep, I, I wasn't happy. So after that, I decided to do some squatting. Obviously, I'm going to do squatting. Uh, went with uh, back squats today. Worked up to 180. That felt all right. Uh, felt okay. I mean, I wasn't going to push it uh, much much further than that. Um, in the next few days, I'm going to do, there's going to be very kind of low level uh, effort in training. I've got two night shifts back to back. You know, I don't want to tell you how bad that is, but not a lot of food, not a lot of sleeping, a whole lot of stress. It's COVID. Uh, COVID cases here are, are blowing up uh, here in Adelaide. And so the hospitals are busy. We're overflowing with patients. Uh, ambulances are overflowing. Everyone's overflowing. S heaps of sick leave. Heaps of people doing overtime. Uh, so the last thing I need is five by five of RDLs at 200 kilos. And they're going into a 12-hour shift. I'm not going to do that. And also, I'm basically going into a, a shitstorm. Uh, COVID everywhere. The last thing I want to do is knock my immune system for a six through a crazy, crazy workout. So I'm kind of leaving the heavy workouts for the days where I actually can recover. Um, so which are basically days off. So next two days are going to be kind of like today. I'm going to mess around with these deficit pulls, mess around with these reverse Nordics and, and take these squats for singles. I'm going to stay away from volume altogether. Um, that's kind of my plan. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I don't think days like this on days where you don't want to work really hard, a lot of people would think, oh, it's a complete waste of time to go to the gym. Man, I, I don't know how to argue the point, but I mean, those days are very important. For instance, today, because it was kind of out of programming day, because uh, of the night shift, I sat down and I did some thinking. And I was like, okay, there seems to be a pattern here. Flies, reverse Nordics. What about deficit pulls? What do they do? So I did them, I discovered something. My hamstrings got lit up more than anybody else. That's interesting. I think I need my hamstrings. Just the other day I was talking about 
Do I do GHR? Do I do naughty curls, hamstring curls? Uh, do I do the leg uh, leg curls? Like what sort of exercise is best for hamstrings? And then I do deficit pulls and I'm like, okay, I'm feeling these. I don't know what the hell is going on here, but I'm feeling them. So uh, these days are very important. In fact, these are the days that I'm, I want to say most fun to me uh, because I'm kind of messing around and playing around. It's not, it's not hard work. When I've got those days, like a few days ago that I did five sets of five, both in the squat and the deadlift and, and the Romanian deadlift, that's a, that's a fight, man. I'm huffing and puffing. I'm walking around and I'm, I'm doing laps around the house. I'm going through four liters of water. It's hot. You know, that's, that's kind of like a hard, hard slog. Uh, but today, they like today, like it's, it's just a breeze. Like this is kind of like, I can just picture like a shoot around in the NBA, you know, like guys coming around on the court, all these dudes around rebounding and Steph Curry standing and running around doing some, you know, shots, uncontested shots and whatever. Um, you're still kind of playing the sport, but you're not taxing. It's kind of like, you're kind of practicing your skills and you're thinking about things, but you're not, you know, getting elbowed in the guts and you're not, you know, playing hard defense and, and all that sort of stuff. So it's kind of easy to recover from. Um, I've kind of moved away from being a numbskull and pushing these heavy singles. I think pushing heavy singles, like for instance, today I probably could have two, hit 200, maybe, I don't know, maybe 190. Um, you know, if I, if I get down a little bit quicker and, and, and bounce back up. But I'm not even in the mood, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm kind of sleepy. I haven't had all, all that much sleep. And I don't want to kind of excite myself to that point either. I just want calm lifting. Um, that's something that Matt Perriman talks you know, well about um, in his book. It's all about, you know, uh, the emotional response. You know, he talks that it's, it's much more costly to recover from emotional, you know, uh, arousal, arousal level than the actual physical exertion. So, you know, smelling salts, getting slapped in the face, yelling, screaming, listening to heavy metal, those emotional responses, that adrenal, adrenaline release is actually what sets you back more in your, in your program, in your recovery, than the actual physical five by five or whatever the hell you're doing. So days like this, you know, just go with the flow, man. Whatever's, whatever the bar gives you, take it and that's it. All right, guys, I'm gonna kind of pack up here and get in the house and, and get some sleep before the night shift if I can. Uh, once again, guys, uh, the fellas on the list here, number one supporters, those guys are supporting me on Patreon. A few names actually popped up last night as well. So I want to thank, uh, if I can read it here, uh, Josh, Phoenix, and Jackson. Um, those fellas came onto the, onto the list last night. Guys, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate it. really means a lot to me. I can't, I can't say it enough. Um, I, I shake my head in disbelief that I'm, that I'm in this position, you know, almost approaching 100,000 people jumping up and supporting the Patreon. It's, it's incredible. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.